welcome to Mears Chapel United Methodist Church. I am Reverend Brenda Newman, the senior pastor here, and am privileged to serve alongside a wonderful staff. Lauren Allred, our director of music, um, creative worship. Brian, our director of youth and discipleship. Kim with our children's ministry and play school. Our entire mission is to connect. Connect people to God, people with people, and resources with needs. At the moment, during COVID, we're connecting through online worship, and I'm thankful that you're joining with us this morning. There's also the opportunity for in-person worship at 9.30 in the sanctuary and at 11 in the gym. Um, it is required to register in advance with our church office, but we hope you join us in one of our various um, ways that we're offering worship. We are in the season of Advent now, and this Sunday is the second Sunday in Advent. We are focusing on the spiritual gifts of Advent, um, hope, joy, peace, and love. And today, Brian Edwards, our Director of Youth and Discipleship, will bring the message on peace. So I'm looking forward to hearing that message together. Let us pray. We enter into this new season, Lord, proclaiming once more the Word made flesh, that the light shines in the world and the darkness did not overcome it, that your nature is unchanging, your love steadfast, your forgiveness overflowing, and that with you nothing is impossible. Open our hearts once more to receive the gifts of hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen. Let's sing together the hymn, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. Chapel family, it's time again for Community Angels. So when you see these cards, what do you think? Helping out the less fortunate from Moorhead Elementary School. But this year, because of circumstances beyond our control, we're not going to be able to go gift shopping this year. So instead of it being Community Angels, it's going to be Community Angel Remix. Yay! So instead of getting one of these little cards where you go out and you buy gifts and bring them back, 
and a nice bag with lots of tissue paper and all that good stuff to give to the kids. We are going to be purchasing gift cards this year. So we're gonna give $50 gift cards to all the kids that have been identified and I'm gonna mail them in a snazzy jazzy little kind of card um, and it'll be addressed to them from Santa, of course, and Muir's Chapel. Um, so if you want to help out, either send a check, cash, go online, and donate however much you want to donate but in the four line make sure you put community angels remix we bless a lot of kids every year so we're hoping you'll continue with this tradition thanks so much see you soon hey it's lauren here and i need your help on christmas eve even though we do have an in-person service we're not going to be able to sing silent night the way we normally would so i'm working on a special video project just for that service if you would, take a quick picture of your family in front of your tree with your Advent wreath outside with some candles or even with some neighborhood Christmas lights and send it to me at ldallred at muirschapelumc.com. You can also make a short three to five second video of your family saying Merry Christmas. I can't wait to see what you come up with. Hey, I got some exciting news about the youth ministry. We are shifting our times to Sunday from 5 o'clock into 6.30, and we're able to bring our own food again. We're not going to be able to share or pass food back and forth to each other, but you can bring your own food. And so we'll begin every Sunday evening at 5 o'clock with, with the meal that you bring yourself, and then it ends at 6.30. And so that's, that's number one, that the time has changed. Number two, you can bring food. Number three, on December 20th is our last Sunday night meeting in December, and it is going to be a Christmas party, and it's going to be fantastic. We'll be giving you lots of details about that coming up soon, but we'll see you tonight at Youth at 5 o'clock. Bring you some food, and we'll have a great time. All right, see you there. Bye. to a screen near you on Sunday, December 20th at 7 p.m. is the Muir-Tacular Primetime Christmas Special featuring our very own Brian Edwards as the host and the musical and non-musical talents of our Muir's Chapel family. Enjoy this holiday primetime Christmas special in your homes with your family with a YouTube watch party. It'll be at seven o'clock on December 20th and ahead of the event, we'll be sending out recipes to share with your family like Sue Chaparazzi's famous wassail and the best hot chocolate recipe I can find. Sunday, December 20th at 7 p.m., the Muir's-Tacular Primetime Christmas Special. You don't want to miss it. Good morning, children of all ages. Um, I'm sitting in front of the Christmas tree in the sanctuary today, and that makes me happy. And thinking about that, speaking of feelings and happy and emotions, I'm a person that has a lot of feelings. Sometimes I'm happy, sometimes I'm sad, sometimes I'm worried, sometimes I'm frustrated because you try to do something and you have a hard time doing it. I bet all of you have all of those feelings too. And sometimes those feelings can be really strong like you can have a strong feeling of worry or sadness and, and you need a little help when those feelings come along. At least I've discovered that. And I've found some things that help. There's a scripture from the Bible. It's in the book of John. It's in the New Testament, John chapter 14, verse 27. And Jesus told some of his closest friends, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. And I remember that because he was telling that to us, to you and me today too. Jesus was telling you that he is always with you, that you can go to him when you have those strong emotions and you can pray and, and ask Jesus to help you with them and ask Jesus to feel really close. So there are lots of things that we can do when we get overwhelmed with emotions. Um, when my younger son, his name is Jacob, when he was little, he carried these blankets right here. Actually, we have two of them. He only carried one at a time. But you might can guess why we got two. We got two so that if one was dirty, we could wash it and he still had one just like it. And he carried them with him and he especially liked them when he was feeling a strong emotion. Maybe he was just tired or, or 
you know, a little worried about something, but then he really liked his blanket then. So sometimes we have things that make us feel a little more peaceful and a little more sure. Sometimes we have people like climbing up in mom and dad's lap or a grandparent that we like to talk to and share with or a teacher or a good friend. God gives us people. God gives us things to help us with those strong emotions, especially when we need to feel peace, when we need to feel calm. But remember Jesus's words, my peace I give to you. He gives that to you and me right now. And we get that by just going to him and praying, knowing that he hears us and that he's with us. And we can just kind of take that deep breath and say, Lord, come in and fill me with your peace. And he's right there for you. So know that the Lord loves you, Jesus loves you, and he's with you all the time. Hope you have a lot of those good emotions of happiness and joy. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called for they will be called children of God. Matthew 5, 9. We light this candle as a symbol of the Prince of Peace. We remember that God, through Jesus, gives us peace from the past. God offers forgiveness and new starts. We remember that Jesus is the Prince of Peace for the future. And today, we take heart and find assurance that Jesus is our peace for this moment. God is with us in the midst of chaos and calms our souls. We listen today to the hymn, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear, with its focus on the angelic request for peace on earth. The first verse proclaims, It came upon the midnight clear, that glorious song of old, from angels bending near the earth to touch their harps of gold. Peace on the earth, good will to men, from heaven's all gracious king, the world in solemn stillness. Made to hear the angels sing. The peace that God offers is a peace in the past, peace within, peace with others, and peace with God Himself. They all begin as we invite the Prince of Peace into our hearts. O come, O come, Emmanuel. We turn now to our prayer time this morning, and as always, we continue to have many to remember, all of those on the front lines, prayers of gratitude for the vaccines that are coming out and for a smooth um, communication, distribution, um, wise decisions all along the way. I do especially ask that you remember Jackie Sullivan and little baby Isaac and baby Clark. Continue to keep them in your prayers daily. For this morning's service, I'm turning to a prayer that's very dear. We've prayed it several times before in worship. It's called, For the Mind of Christ. Bow with me as I pray. Let us remember Jesus, who though he was rich, yet for our sakes became poor and dwelt among us, who was content to be subject to his parents, the child of a poor couple's home, who lived for 30 years the common life, earning his living with his own hands and declining no humble task, whom the people heard gladly, for he understood their ways. May this mind be in us, which was in Christ Jesus. Let us remember Jesus, who was mighty indeed, healing the sick and the disordered, using for others the powers he would not invoke for himself, who refused to force people's allegiance, who was master and lord to his disciples, yet was among them as their companion and as one who served, whose desire was to do the will of God who sent him. May this mind be in us, which was in Christ Jesus. Let us remember Jesus who loved people, yet retired from them to pray, rose a great while before day, watched through the night, stayed in the wilderness, went up into a mountain, sought a garden, who when he would help a tempted disciple, prayed for him who prayed for the forgiveness of those who rejected him and for the perfecting of those who received him, who observed the traditions but defied convention that did not serve the purposes of God, who hated the sins of pride and selfishness and cruelty and impurity. May this mind be in us, which was in Christ Jesus. 
Let us remember Jesus who believed in people and never despaired of them, who through all disappointment never lost heart, who disregarded his own comfort and convenience and thought first of others' needs, and though he suffered long, was always kind, who when he was reviled uttered no harsh word in return, and when he suffered did not threaten retaliation, who humbled himself and carried obedience to the point of death, even death on the cross, wherefore God has highly exalted him. In this Christmas season, O Lord, O Christ, our only Savior, so come to dwell in us that we may go forth with the light of hope in our eyes and with your peace and your faith and your love in our hearts. Amen. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, good will toward men. Hello. Will you please pray with me? God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be found accepting and pleasing to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Well, today is the second Sunday in Advent, and the theme of the day is peace. How can we experience peace this Advent? One of the threads that we're going to weave throughout our whole Advent series is the idea of the Grinch and how the Grinch is going to try to steal Christmas and to take away our joy, but yet Advent is going to give us reason to reclaim those things. So today we're going to try to figure out how, even though the Grinch is trying to steal our joy, how can we have and experience God's Peace. That's what we have before us today, and I'm excited to share this message with you. We'll start off with a little kind of good news, bad news. And the bad news is, is that there indeed is a Grinch out there who wants to steal our joy. First Peter 5, 8 says this. Stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil. We'll call him the Grinch today. The Grinch, he prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Like in the song, The Grinch, he's a mean one, Mr. Grinch, right? It's a mean one. And so we have lots of things out there besides just the Grinch that's going to try to rob our joy and take our peace away. We're experiencing that through the, through the pandemic and through uh, all the things that we're going through in our country and in the world. And so the bad news is, is that as human beings on earth, we will experience fear. We will experience uh, anxiety. We will experience things that are not peaceful. But God affirms that and understands that about us. And so 
that's why there's the flip side of the coin, that Jesus comes to meet us where we are at and God comes and comforts us where we are at to give us peace in the midst of a world that is not peaceful at times. You see, Jesus came to give us peace, peace in a hectic, frantic world. Have you ever seen the Charlie Brown Christmas show that comes on every Christmas? Right. Charlie Brown's trying to put on the Christmas pageant and things have just gone crazy. It is chaos and things are not going right. And all of a sudden, Charlie Brown goes, this is just crazy. Doesn't anybody know what Christmas is all about? And then Linus walks up to him and Linus is a character that always had his security blanket. Comes up to Charlie Brown and says, sure, Charlie Brown, I know what Christmas is all about. And he walks to the middle of the stage and he recites the scripture that we've heard this morning. And in the midst of that, he says, and the angel said unto them, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Now, you need to understand Linus. Linus always has his security blanket throughout the whole entire series in the comics. He always had it except for one moment in time. And it's during this Christmas special. If you watch the video, if you look it up on YouTube, and if you watch the video, when Lina says, fear not, his hands go down and he drops his security blanket. He understands that uh, he places his faith and his hope in God and not in the security blanket. And in that moment, he has peace. The camera pans back and he finishes the rest of the scripture standing there with a security blanket on the ground. And then when he's finished, he picks it back up and walks off the stage and says, you see, Charlie Brown, that's what Christmas is all about. That's what we can do. We can experience those moments of peace in the middle of chaos when we can lay down our security blankets, put our hope and faith in God and experience the type of peace that Advent is all about. We can experience this peace that only Christ can give in three ways. The first way is that we can experience peace through Jesus' presence. That's the whole point of the Christmas story, right? Is when Jesus burst onto the scene where he lives out the name that they gave him, Emmanuel, which means God with us. You see, a big fancy church word is um, uh, incarnation. And that's where God came and lived among his people with them. God with us. And Luke 2, 11, it says this. For unto you this day in the city of David is a savior, which is Christ the Lord for you. Jesus is born a savior. And that's important because we're going to come back to that in a moment that, that the savior is born because it's all about the rescue mission that God sent Jesus on to save us for a relationship, an eternal relationship with him. You see, it was 400 years from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Where they they're called the silent years, where there wasn't any new prophets, no new revelations, and it seemed like God had just gone quiet. 400 years, people waited for Jesus to be born, and they experienced life waiting for Jesus to come. We, however, get to experience uh, what we go through in life, not having to wait for Jesus to come because he already has come. And so we experience life with Jesus. We are very blessed because we have already Jesus's presence in our life. We don't have to wait for it. We already have it. So Jesus's presence. The second thing that we have that we can experience the peace of God now is through Jesus's promise. Jesus promised. Actually, there's two of them. The first is that this presence that he gives us, the first great thing we experience, Jesus' presence, is not going away. And Jesus promises that. He is loyal for all eternity. Matthew 28, 20 says this. 
Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands that I have given you. And be sure of this. How awesome is that? We, we have an assurance here. Be sure of this. I am with you always, even until the end of the age. So Jesus is with us now and for always. Jesus promises that. So we can have peace in knowing that we're not going to be abandoned. We're not going to find ourselves in a situation where Jesus says, hey, I'm out. We always have Jesus. The second promise that we have is that not only does that promise extend for here on earth, but for all eternity. You see, we are told that a savior is born who is going to uh, save us from our sins so that now we have eternal life. And we can find this out. And through Colossians chapter one, verses 19 through 22, this work kind of explains the whole gospel, really, of, of Jesus and, and the, the birth all the way through the death. And it's this. Starting at verse 19. For God and all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ and through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies separated from him by your evil thoughts and actions. Yet now he has reconciled you to himself through the death of Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you into his own presence. There again. Brought into God's presence. And you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. All of your sins taken away. So Jesus promises, not only am I not ever going to leave you, but I'm going to save you. And now you have all eternity to enjoy a relationship in the presence of God. Third way that we get to experience uh, peace here on earth is through Jesus's people. You see, I truly believe that one of the greatest gifts God gives us is each other. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 and 25, it says this in terms of the way that we're supposed to help each other. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing, <coughs> excuse me, is drawing near. Let us motivate each other to acts of love. Let us help each other, support each other, encourage each other. We help bring peace into each other's lives by standing with each other in those hard times. And then 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10 uh, says this in terms of the way that we help other people outside of the church. 1 Peter 5, 9 says, Stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Now, by the way, we're talking about the same Grinch here. Earlier, we talked about uh, 1 Peter 5, 8, where it says uh, the devil is our great enemy and he prowls around. And this is the next verse to that. And it says, stand firm against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your family of believers all over the world is going through the same type of suffering that you are. In other words, we are bound together and we're not in it alone. And then we work together to experience the peace of God by creating the peace. In other words, if we see someone in a situation where they're not experiencing peace, we get to help bring peace to their lives. We partner in God in that way. Listen to this, 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, out of darkness into light, moving towards peace. And this is what it says. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received 
mercy. You see, we get to be part of a people that love and support each other and bring peace and the message of peace to the world. So we experience the peace that only God can give through Christ, through Jesus' presence, Jesus' promise, and Jesus' people. I'll close with this. On our honeymoon, my wife and I went to Bermuda. And on Bermuda's uh, there, we rented mopeds. And we get to ride around the island there on mopeds. Now, they claim they drive on the correct side of the road. I say they drive on the wrong side of the road in Bermuda. And so when we rented the moped, the guy told us over and over again, remember, you drive on the left side of the road. You drive on the left side of the road. If you get on the right side of the road, you're going to cause an accident. Drive on the left side of the road. Well, uh, my wife has what I like to call a lead foot. She can kind of go, uh, she likes to go fast. And so um, we were pulling out of the parking lot. Uh, and so she pulled right into the right hand lane, driving on the wrong side of the road. And there was an issue with the moped down at the, where her feet were. So she was looking down at her feet and there was a car coming straight at her in her lane. So I pulled in behind her and I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, Lisa, pull over, pull over. She could not hear me. Right. So finally she looks up, she sees and she kind of freaks out and pulls off the side of the road, kind of slams on brakes. And I pull up behind her and I'm excited. She's excited. And so I yell like, what are you doing? You have got to stop driving on the wrong side of the street. And she said, if you're going to yell at me every time I drive on the wrong side of the street, I'm not going to do it anymore. And I was like. Good. You see. I think sometimes we find ourselves in that situation in life. Maybe the world is like that right now. There's chaos. There's danger around. And and we have no control over it. I had no. I was riding behind my wife fearful that something horrible was about to happen. But the good news is that we were in those situations. That we have Jesus' presence his promise and his people and because of that we can in fact experience peace and i hope today in these moments you have felt god reach out tap you on the shoulder tell you that he loves you and you experience the peace of god let us pray god today we thank you for your peace in Jesus' name. We have come to a holy moment in today's service, the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Meal, the Eucharist, sharing together. Normally we would have a common loaf and the common cup, but today as you worship from your homes, um, if you have not already, go find just some kind of juice and a piece of bread to join with us in this holy service. And remember that wherever each of us are, we're, we're still the body of Christ. We're still one. The Lord has blessed these elements. And more than anything, it is his meal. He invites us. And he wants to strengthen us and assure us and pour out his compassion on us once again. Let us pray. Lift up your hearts and give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and sovereign of the universe. You love the world so much, you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. He suffered and died for the sin of the world. You raised him from the dead that we too might have new life. He ascended to be with you in glory, and according to his promise, is with us always. On the night he offered himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of all your mighty acts, 
In Jesus Christ, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, which we offer in union with Christ's sacrifice for us as a living and holy surrender of ourselves. Send the power of your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this juice, we may know the presence of the living Christ, be one in him, cleansed by his blood, faithfully serve him in the world, and look forward to his coming in final victory. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And this is the body of Christ broken for you. And as you partake of the bread, remember that God has given his life for you and loves you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. May you receive those gifts of strength and peace and hope and love and joy once again today. Amen. Let's sing together, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. <laughs> <laughs> 